Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to our fourth lesson in our 10th unit on recursion. Uh, today we are going to talk about the recursive binary search. So we're going to jump back into our binary search algorithm, which we learned how to do back in unit seven. But now we're going to talk about how we can do it recursively. So a few things to recall about the binary search algorithm is that it is very efficient, um, more efficient than linear, the linear search algorithm for almost all cases, um, but it needs to be sorted. You have to have a sorted array or a sorted array list. Okay. All of the examples I do in this lesson, I should note, are for arrays. You can easily apply it to an array list. It's just, I'm just going to show you all for arrays. Um, it works by repeatedly dividing your inter your search interval in half. So basically dividing your array um, in half and trying to narrow it down to find the element you are looking for. Um, so the pseudo code that we developed back in unit seven, um, first we have to find what our midpoint is. And we do that by taking our low index and our high index, adding them together and dividing by two, right? So what's the middle, um, middle index? We then look to see, is our target value at that middle index? Okay. If it is, great, return the value, right? But if our target value is lower than where our midpoint is or lower than the value at our midpoint, we want to repeat this process, but we want to change our high index, right? So if our target value is lower than our midpoint, that means that our value is in the lower half of the list. So that means our high needs to come down, right? If it's higher than our midpoint, um, we repeat uh, with the low index changed, because that means that the value we're looking for is in the upper half of the list, okay? So we do that until we find our match or until our high um, is less than our low, okay? Which means that our target value does not exist. We weren't able to find it. And in that case, our algorithm returns negative one, indicating that we never found the, um, the target in our array, okay? So that was the pseudocode. Um, this isn't in your notes, but I do just want to visually refresh your memory on what a binary search is. Okay, um, so this goes for both um, the iterative binary search and the recursive binary search algorithm. They are both done the same way. They are just coded differently. So let's say I have an array of 11 numbers. There's 11 numbers right here, and I want to find five. Okay. So what I do, I start by defining, okay, where's my middle index? So in an array of 11 values, my middle index is going to be at index five. Okay. So that is, I've circled my middle index and I look, I say, is that number five? Nope, not five. Okay, so it's not five. Is five greater than 17 or less than 17? Well, five would be less than 17. Okay, so because it's less than 17, five is in the lower half of my list. So I eliminate the upper half of my list. Right? I just, I don't look at it anymore. Okay, now my array doesn't actually get changed, but visually I'm just not gonna look over there anymore. The, what's changing is my indexes, okay? So now, since I know five is in the lower half of my array, this was my mid, this was my mid index. Now I want my mid minus one. So this is my low. This was my high index was 10. Okay, and I found my middle index of five. And now I want my um, new high, because this was my old high. I want my new high to be mid minus one. Okay, because I know it's not at mid, so I don't want high to equal mid. I want it to be less than one. So now I repeat that same thing, but with just the lower half of the list. This is still my low, and this is my high. And I repeat. I find my middle index, okay, which is going to be two. And I know that five is less than six. 
So this was my high and this was my low. And because I know that my five, the value I'm searching for, is less than six, that means I need to change my high index again. So this was my mid, so my high needs to be changed to mid minus one again. Okay. So I basically eliminate more of my array visually. Then I am down to two values. Um, with two values, if this is your low and this is your high, um, low is zero, high is one, add them together, you get one. Divide by two, you get zero. So my middle index would be zero. I check five is not at my middle index, it's higher. So that means I go back and I do it again. This becomes, this is my low and my high. Okay, because they can be equal. All right, it's when your high becomes lower than your low that you don't find it, but they can be equal. Um, then it also becomes your mid and you found your value at your mid, your middle index. So this would return a one because five is located at index one. Okay, so that's the visual recap of what a binary search is. Um, the code. This is the iterative code. So this is the binary search with the while loop that we did, okay? So you're given the number you wanna find and a list of, in this case, integer values. You find your high and your low. You start with your endpoints, your last, your first index of zero and your last index of list length minus one. While your low index is less than your high index, you find the middle and then you ask the questions right? If your number you're trying to find is at your middle index, then great, return your middle index. You have found it. If the value you are trying to find is less than the value at your middle index, you want to change your high, okay? And this is what we did um, in the example we just did. We kept changing our high, right, to middle minus one. Or maybe it's in the upper half of the list and you have to change your low index, but all of that takes place in a while loop. Okay. That's the iter we call that the iterative binary search. Binary search done with a while loop. Now let's take this code and let's look at the recursive binary search. Okay. So the recursive binary search takes four parameters now. Okay. It takes the list. It's going to take two indexes that represent your high and your low now. And then num represents what you're trying to look for. So high index and low index. Um, they're still going to start off as um, um, when you call on them, they're still going to start off as low being zero and high being your list dot length minus one. So when you initiate this recursive algorithm, you start off with those definitions. Low is zero and high is list dot length minus one. And then we have an if statement, okay? Now this if statement, as long as high is greater than or equal to low, and your low is not past um, your list length, you want to basically keep making recursive calls or return um, your middle index. Our base case is when these one of these things is not true then we return a one and that's how rec the recursion stops is if one of those is not true we return a negative one saying we never found our value okay so we still have to find our middle so we still take the low plus high divided by two that doesn't change and we still ask the same questions now if list in the middle is equal to num we still return middle okay we found the value we are looking for return middle meaning that's the middle index and we still ask, again, two more questions. The first question, is your list at the middle greater than num? Okay. Because if it is, then that means your number you are trying to find is in the lower half of your list. So you change your high, okay? And notice this recursive call, ooh, sorry, this should be search binary instead of binary search. I got confused. So this should be search binary. So make the recursive call onto itself. You're still passing it the list. Remember, your array actually doesn't change at all. Um, 
It's just the indexes that change. Your high index is going to change. Your low index stays the same. And the number you're trying to find always stays the same too. Okay. Your other else is for the opposite. If the value you are looking for is less than your um, what you have in your middle index, or excuse me, if it's greater than what you have at your middle index, then you want to change your low value. So again, this should be search binary. Your high stays the same, and it's your low index that changes. Okay, sorry. So again, search binary. And that's your recursive binary search. <laughs> there it is. So you might see either on the AP exam, both are generally accepted, um, but they are, they are going to do the same thing when, with that binary search. Okay. And that brings us to the end of the lesson today. So um, a quick recap of the binary search followed by showing you the code for the recursive binary search. Remember, you won't have to write recursive algorithms on the AP exam, but you should be able to recognize it and trace it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.